Okay, good morning. So it seems like everyone can hear me clearly. Well, welcome to this morning's webinar, Using and Monitoring the Shop Client for a More Efficient and Cost-Effective Shop Floor. Today's webinar is being recorded, and I will send you a link to the recording within 24 hours of today's broadcast. Because you are all busy, we understand that some of you may be multitasking today, and because of that, we have muted everybody. If you want to ask any questions as we move forward, please enter them in your question box, and I will get to them at different stoppages throughout the presentation. I will also have a short time at the end so that we can answer some questions if we have any. <clears throat> also, today's webinar, um, we will make sure that we get everything completed today, and what we'll try to do is make sure that we're get done and completed within the 30-minute time frame. With that, we'd like to go ahead and move forward with the using and monitoring the shop client. The objectives that we have today are to discuss the use of the shop floor client, to show you a quick tool that is available, the Labor and Work Center costing sheet, and this is for management and administration, explore the labor and machine setup, talk about the necessity of quality data, learn the log in and log out process, having efficient shop floor employees, learn how to manage using the shop floor status, and we'll also introduce the new mobile application. So let's start with the shop floor mode. <clears throat> this is the sh basic shop floor system right here. As most of you know, there are many other modules in the full client. The shop floor client only has these three sections here. The jobs group, the shop floor group, and the loading group. Today, we will not talk about the loading group as this module is not included in today's webinar as it is an additional purchased module and licensed module. The Realtrack 10 client switches to shop floor mode when a user logs in with an ID that has only the shop floor role enabled. By default, during the installation process, we create a user named shop floor that has the specific setup for you. You can add more as you choose. <clears throat> you can also change access and permissions to these groups through the shop floor login. So within the job group, which is the left uh, screenshot here, the user will be able to access the following tabs. The job entry tab and the router tab. You'll see the job entry tab here and the router tab here. When looking at a job, the user will have read access to the following types of files. Files that are categorized as drawing, files categorized as part, files that are attached to the routers, files that are attached to spec lines, and the user will also be able to add notes to router lines. This is extremely important if a certain setup is needed or for future recurring jobs or for any notes that the machine operator wants to let the next operator know or the program manager. Now things the shop floor client user will not be able to do is they can't see any files that are a reference, as purchase order, as description, or as other. They will also not be able to save changes to any files, add any new files to the job, router, or spec line, and they will not be able to see any files attached to the bill since they do not have access to the bill tab. I'm going to pause here briefly to see if there's any questions. Okay, it doesn't look like we have any questions at this time, so I'll go ahead and move forward to the next part here, which is setting this all up. <clears throat> this is a labor cost worksheet, so I'd first like to discuss how we can get accurate rates within the Realtrack system. One of the things we notice with all of our new installations and some of our conversions is a lot of our customers don't have accurate rates or costs associated with their machines and labor, so they are actually quoting a little bit low or they could be quoting a little bit high. What we see is a vast majority of our new customers find that within Realtrack, they learn pretty quick that they have not been capturing all of their costs associated with the job within their quote or estimate. So this is a worksheet that we can provide to our customers that are looking for some assistance in analyzing their labor, workstation, and overhead costs and prices. This is designed to assist you in creating a good rationale when making decisions on your rates. This is a practice we highly recommend going through periodically 
to confirm your costs and prices are understood and utilized in the very best way in the Realtrack system to ensure your business success. What we find is that the typical range of quotes to orders is approximately 35%. If you are getting less than that, you may be quoting too expensive. And if you're receiving much higher than that, you may have customers who are holding you underwater. We had just a customer last week, um, a, a, a production facility here in Michigan, that told us when they worked on this work center sheet here, this cost worksheet, they found that a customer that they've had for six or seven years and a job that was recurring every year that thought was one of their best jobs ended up being one of their worst jobs. It wasn't a loser, but it was a very low margin. So this is a great opportunity to take a look at things. I'll walk through a couple of them here just quickly, and if you do have an interest in these, email me at jeremy at realtrack.com, and we'll make sure that we get these worksheets over to you as they are free for our customers, and you can use them as you wish. They are Excel spreadsheets, so you can play with numbers, change numbers, and use it at your discrepancy. So what we see here with our labor costs, you know, we have a base rate of $21 just for a machinist here. And once you put in all their information, their uh, taxes and their health insurance and their vacations, which a lot of our customers don't use all these things, they, you, we come to a net cost per hour. So a $21 an hour machinist actually costs $37.49 an hour based on this information. When we talk about our machine cost worksheet, we have two, oper two operations here. We have a fully owned machine and a finance machine. So this gives us a nice opportunity to know exactly what each machine is budgeted cost per hour. That includes hours per sold, the floor space allocation, regardless of whether your warehouse or your uh, building or uh, structure is completely paid for or there's a lease on it, the energy draw that it has, and any repairs and consumables that you typically see per year. You can see that through a finance machine and, of course, a budgeted uh, owned machine. Again, overhead cost worksheet. We find that a lot of our customers are not entering their overhead within their quotes. People are very, very busy throughout the year. They, you know, we're doing really good. We're really, really busy. Then at the end of the year, we don't have any dividends or anything extra. And that's a lot of times is based on the overhead, the GFNA. So what we do is we have these opportunities for our customers. Again, you know, a lot of our customers have been going for 35 years or even 10 years or even two years, and they have a very good understanding of all these things, and some do not. So again, this is just something that we offer. If it's something that you think you could use, email me, and I'll get them out to you. If it's not, that's quite all right. So moving forward to the entry. <clears throat> Once you've completed your decisions on your rates, they are entered into the setup portion of your real track client. This is where you'd place your rates that have been determined for employees and for your workstations. As you see here, each employee has their rate included within their entry, and of course, whatever permissions that they have, what they can and cannot use within Realtrack. So you'll see here, for, for instance, you have Angelo's at 18 and Brian's at 30 or whatever it may be. Here is where we would enter our machine cost rate that we just came up with off our worksheet or what you currently are using in your system. <clears throat> this is also a great time to complete your consistent work stoppages. If your company has any breaks, periods, and or holidays, it's important to enter these into your Realtrack client for cost tracking. As you can see with this company, they have four breaks and a lunch. So what happens with the shop client, which we'll talk about here in a few minutes, but once your breaks are already set up, if you have consistent breaks every day, your employees will not have to go up to the machine or to the system and log off and log back on during their 10 minute or 15 minute break duration. The system will automatically break everybody off at that time. As well as holidays. All the holidays are scheduled in here. So whatever holidays or, or break periods or times that you are shut down is all included in the settings here. And one of the key reasons for this is, of course, is that we want to make sure that it's all set up in ahead of time. So why that is, is that when you're estimating or quoting jobs or building jobs, Within the structure of your timeline, when you quote the job, this will come into effect when, it, when you can tell a customer you can get it done in four weeks, two weeks, three weeks, and so on and so forth. We'll also explore this a little further as we continue. I'm going to pause here quickly to see if we have any questions. Perfect. Again, we don't have any questions. So feel free to type in your questions in your question pod if you do have any questions. And again, I'll stop periodically here to check in on them. 
<clears throat> so let's discuss the quality of your data. This is really important. So early in the process of developing version 10, we spoke with numerous customers and industry professionals. And what we saw was a near universal problem with all of our customers and all of our prospects is that data quality. The quality data of within an enterprise resource planning software, or as like we like to say with Realtrack, an easy resource planning software, is extremely critical. One specific pain point to manufacturing shops is getting the employees to log in and out of jobs, to log their completed pieces and scrap quantities. Realtrack can only provide data as good as the inputs. So when your shop floor operators forget to log into jobs, forget to log out, or neglect to input piece counts, the quality of your data suffers. As soon as the data suffers, management and administration's trust in the data fails and customer satisfaction is reduced. Now with the Real Track Shop client, we expect that you will immediately see an improvement in the quality of your data, the way we have it structured. This will lead to much better shop floor control and consistent costing information. Getting a handle on the true cost of jobs means management can tell which jobs truly are profitable and which jobs are not profitable. With this quality data, it will help your business get more of these profitable jobs and fix or deny those jobs that are unprofitable. So a couple of quick notes here. Employee training. Training on how to do the simple reporting necessary for operational data collection is extremely important. So what you should do is learn who can be mentors on the floor, have some training sessions where mentors can show how it's done, and so other operators can also see peers entering the data and have each operator practice until proficient. You must have easy access to terminals. Locations of the shop floor PCs so that data entry is convenient is important. Realtrack has also created an iOS-based mobile application to further provide this convenience. We'll discuss that shortly. But importantly, operators must see data input as part of their job. This is not extra duty. It is an absolute requirement. Then we come to the hassle factor. The purpose of the data collection should be shared with your operators in the most constructive sense so that they understand why it is a key part of managing cost, quality, and for continuous improvement on the shop floor. So now let's watch this short video on using the shop floor client logging in and out of jobs for quality data tracking. If we do have any shop floor operators out there, this is exactly where we'll be able to see that information. Logging on and logging off of operations in the Realtrack ERP system. For this task, we have the Realtrack shop floor status screen. Within that screen, there are two separate views. One is the workstation status view. And from there, there is a button called Login Router Operation that will invoke the micro terminal. Similarly, from the employee status screen, Simply touching the name of the employee will highlight that employee's name on the right. All active jobs are listed in the left. If you want to quickly find that active job, you can put the active job number in there or part of the description in the find box. If you don't have access to a keyboard, you can invoke the screen's onboard keyboard. Typing in the job number and hitting enter will find the job in the active job list. Once selected, the operations are enumerated. Selecting your operation will automatically pick the default workstation for that operation. You can select another workstation if need be. Once done, click Accept. Once logged on to the job, an operator may want to make additional comments about that particular operation. Holding your finger on the employee's name will invoke the Open Job context menu.
Once the job is up on the screen, the user can then go to the router screen. By clicking the router tab and selecting your operation will allow you to make some additional comments in the spec field. And again, invoking the onboard keyboard. Additional information can go there. Once done, selecting update, the information is now set in the system for supervisors to review later. To log off of the same operation, again, touching the name will invoke a question that will allow you to log off of that operation or you can log on to another operation. In this case, we're going to log off. A numeric keypad will appear allowing you to put in your pieces completed. And some additional information tells you how many pieces have already been done on previous operations. Hitting enter, that allows you to put in your pieces scrapped. Our default value is zero. We'll just hit enter. You can then close your operation if you want to. And once done, clicking accept will officially log you off of that operation. And that is logging on and logging off of operations in the Realtrack ERP system. So as you can see, logging on and logging off of the Realtrack shop client is extremely easy. What we just saw today on that webinar or that uh, video was using the touchscreen client that a majority of our new customers or our current customers as they go to conversion are using on their shop floor. Of course, if you're still using a PC with a mouse, that is the same difference as just using the mouse click and the keyboard to type in any information. The logging in and logging off it takes literally just a few seconds and is extremely easy. That video can also be accessed from our website on our support page. You will need your customer login to access the set of training videos that have been completed. If you do not have your login, please email me after the webinar. Again, jeremy at realtrack.com and I'll have this sent over to you. Most of you have my email already, but I'll provide it to you as, uh, again at the end of the webinar today. <clears throat> so managing the shop floor with the shop client. So creating on-time, every-time deliveries is extremely vital to your business. You, mu this, you must have the quality data that was just discussed. This data is extremely important in assisting you with your job planning. So we'll now talk about sound management by using the shop floor status screen. For those of you who have used the Realtrack 9 product, you know that it provided a workstation-centric, real-time view into your shop floor. In real time, a user could scan the list and see which workstations were being run, along with the jobs and employees running the stations. However, in version 10, we've replicated this interface, but we've also provided another view of the same data, a view that is employee-based rather than focusing on workstations. So now, not only can you answer the question, what is happening on my inspection workstation, but you can also ask, what job is that employee on right now? In our new employee status window, we provide a pile of information with some simple color codes. In the video you're about to see sh shortly, the color of the employee's name tells us if they are currently logged in, if they're on break, or not currently logged into a job. Also, the color of the cell with the job and operation information tells you how the operation is doing compared to the estimate, whether it is late, on time, or close to the estimate time. We've already had some customers tell us that by bringing this information to the front in real time, they've already been gone digging into their jobs in real time before they've even shipped to try to correct issues with the jobs, whereas in the past, you didn't know if they were on time until we got to the end. So in this new system, when operations running late, obviously means your customer is your company is losing money and at risk that you'll ship the product late. So instead of trying to correct these problems in the job review after the job is shipped and is closed, this new user interface is now catching these in real time 
And we've already been able to see an increase in productivity within our customers because they can catch those changes, those ones that are late, those operations that are in trouble, and get those fixed and changed quickly. So now we're going to watch a short video on managing the shop floor client by using the shop floor status screen. This is to assist you in increasing your customer satisfaction by creating on-time, every-time deliveries by noticing the color codes. You'll also be able to know what operation, what job, and how long they've been logged in for at every time. So let's go ahead and start this video. Describing the color codes in the Realtrack shop floor status screen. Employees who are in a light gray color with the word no activity associated with their name indicates that they are not on any current operation. Employees who are currently on operations will typically show in a green background which indicates they're in a run mode. Under their name will be the associated workstation. The associated tag will indicate which operation they're on for which job and two timed values indicating their current logged on time, the second value indicating the total time put toward that operation. The background being in a light green indicates that the total time is less than the estimated time that was set for that operation. A yellow background shows that you're within 10% of that estimated time set for that operation. Red backgrounds will indicate that you're beyond 10% of the estimated time set for that operation. Backgrounds in dark gray indicate that there was no estimated time set for that operation. If an employee wants to go into a break mode, he can manually set himself in break by selecting the drop-down list under status and selecting break. At this point, their name will be in a dark red color. Break times that are set automatically in the system will automatically set all employees to that dark red color, indicating that they're in a break mode. After the duration of that break time, the system will automatically put everyone in the run mode again. If the employee wants to set himself back into a run mode, he must manually do so from the workstation status screen. So what we just saw there is really, really important based on our logging in, logging off, um, the customers of the data or our employees' data. So as long as they are logging in and logging out as they're supposed to, and again, it is a requirement, <clears throat> and management will be able to notice and program managers and foremen and anyone that's managing the shop floor and jobs will know in real time how close the job is getting to being late or as long as you're on time. It's extremely important to be able to catch those bottlenecks early and increase your customer satisfaction. A lot of our customers now are being on time, every time deliveries, based on this new shop floor client screen. Again, we need to have an effective staff, a confident staff, and have shop floor efficiencies. <clears throat> so we'll talk about that. Getting your staff working really effectively usually comes down to having greater clarity around everyone's respective roles. So as we move forward with Realtrack 10, to get the ball rolling, a staff engagement day can help, followed up by an analysis of the effectiveness of your data once you've begun using the shop client. Because remember, the end goal is getting your staff working more smartly, more accountably, and more efficiently as individuals and aligned to and motivated by a shared goal that they believe in. And this last point is crucial. If you clearly define the contribution of every individual, it becomes straightforward to reward their excellence simply because the company now knows what it looks like. If you can give individuals confidence about the role they are performing and its importance, and clarity about the benefits to be had if they deliver, then you'll often see productivity soar. 
Being in business is mostly about teamwork. So look to make individual efficiencies, targets, and rewards part of the mix. But also work hard to develop a sense of shared ownership among your staff to get the best out of them. Team targets and rewards could well be part of that, but at the very least, you should be engaging with everyone about the vision for the company. You can't expect the best from your people if any of them feel like passengers. Allow them to be involved at every step of the company's journey if you want them completely efficient and motivated. Once they're on board, the sky's the limit. I'm going to pause here to see if we have any questions. Okay. Still no questions. Excellent. <clears throat> so, as I hinted to earlier, let's talk about our mobile application. We are currently in the beta phase, and this release is due very soon. As you'll see, it says late May 2014 release to the Apple Store. So this was released to the Apple Store back in May, and we have been completing our beta testing now. So this should be released, um, licensed out very, very shortly. So what started as a to-do after product launch, this became a mandatory feature that we needed to have complete with Realtrack 10. Um, luckily, inspiration for what we wanted to achieve with the mobile app wasn't difficult. <clears throat> the Realtrack mobile client is designed to allow shop floor employees to log in and out of jobs directly from their phone or mobile device. We, at launch, we will support the Apple ecosystem. This app requires an iOS 7, and the software will function great on iPhones, iPods, and iPads alike. The Realtrack server PC must be connected to the Internet for the software to function. As you see on the screen here, your shop floor employees will be able to log in and out of jobs, log into multiple jobs at the same time, and register both completed and scrap pieces just as they would in the shop client. Employees will also receive notifications, so if they do manage to leave work without logging out of a job, they can be reminded. Customers who, who can choose how they want to implement this product. We've talked with customers that have deployment plans that run across the spectrum. Some plan to buy and install devices around the shop to act like in-place terminals. Some are considering letting their employees use the software on their own personal devices. And some are even considering buying devices for each of their employees to use for this purpose. Each, one, each device or each application, whether it's on a personal iPhone, a business iPhone or iPad or whatever it may be, has a GPS structure built in it. So any employee that is using a mobile application, once they leave the, the confines of the organization or your business or within a, per, a, a, a footage or mileage that you've set in the GPS structure, their, their application will automatically be unavailable. So they would, our, cust our employees will not be able to log in or log out as long as, if they're not inside of the operation or inside of your company. Now this is just our first four-way in mo mobile development. Coming soon, we also have a training application that will aid in the training of our Realtrack users and we'll also expect to follow up with a mobile dash style application, dashboard style application in the future as well. Now this application does have a cost associated with, with it and it's $800 but it only needs one license for multiple users. So for one license of $800, our customers can use, have up to as many iPhones, iPads, or iPods on that one license. This license is also received free of charge for any of our customers that have three shop floor clients on the floor. Last but not least, have no fear, Android fans, because we've also got plans in place for an Android version as well coming shortly. So that's the end of the webinar today, so I'll go ahead and see if we have any questions again and, and see what we can uh, accomplish here. Okay, we do have a question. Uh, looks like Mike wants to be live question, so I'll go ahead and uh, mute you. Mike, you should be able to go live. Okay, so I have, uh, we have an operation that might take two or three days. At the end of the day, how do, they log, how do the guys log off? and log back on to the same, uh, same operation in the morning. Uh, is the operation, is it continuing uh, through running through the night, like on a wire, so to speak? No, at the end of the day, we'll stop running it and, and run it again first thing in the morning. How do I log off and log on? Then? So as, as you saw in the log in, log off process in that video, all you would do, all that uh, staff would log off at the end of the day, 
and then he would just and put in whatever pieces he completed that day. And then in the morning, he, and, uh, do not check the operation completed box. Then in the morning, he'd log right back into that operation again and complete his day. So as long as you do not, as long as your uh, client does not click on the um, to operation completed file, that would be, um, it would continue on. I'm going to go ahead and bring up the shop floor client here. And I'll kind of show you how this works. About time. Can't understand that. Please don't hit complete. That's what we do now, pretty much. I'm like, you had the right to type in the, the parts you completed that day. Okay, looks like my um, client is down right now. So, Mike, I'll go ahead and give you a call here when we're done, and we'll go ahead and walk through that. Um, so, again, all it is is really simply when you log off at the end of the day, you do not do operation completed. As long as you don't click on the operation completed button, then you'll be able to come right back to that operation here in a moment. So, Mike, we'll go ahead and walk through that here in just a few minutes. Any other questions? All right, doesn't look like we have any questions today. So again, this is walking through the shop floor client. If you need any more or actual training on the shop floor client, feel free to shoot me an email and we'll get you set up with one of our trainers or myself and we'll actually walk you through the system. Um, so we hope that was a, a great opportunity to learn some on using and monitoring the shop client. Obviously, this is um, based on the Realtrack 10 client. And we thank you for being Realtrack customers. And we do hope that that would help you out with winning your business race. So we will send out a webinar recording of this today, and you'll have that shortly. We thank you, and have a great day.